Andrew Tate recently sat down with Patrick Bet David for the PBD podcast for nearly five hours. In this episode, Andrew Tate discusses all of his social media bans, his beef with Logan Paul, and so, so much more. But today I wanted to discuss how Andrew Tate has gone full blown insane conspiracy theorist who is regularly spreading misinformation. And that is a concerning aspect of this man's influence that isn't addressed nearly enough. Within the first 10 minutes of this podcast, Andrew Tate mentions all of the lies, the tyranny, and the control that he believes is behind the government and the social media platforms who are trying to suppress his views. The media machine in synchronization with the ban, we can call that coincidence if you want to believe in such things. Now they attacked me with their media machine because first they shut you up so they can lie about you. So they shut me up. Then they did the massive media push to try and attempt to lie about me. And this is gonna have a negative effect on us for a very, very long time. Because when you're in charge of the world, which they are, as soon as you're no longer seen as just and fair, you're seen as tyrannical. And once you're seen as tyrannical, then there's gonna be some kind of mass movement against you. Conspiracy theories in the manosphere are a major issue and it's extremely dangerous. The manosphere is fostering a legion of angry young men who believe that the world is out to get them. In a previous video about strategic ignorance, I discussed how people like Andrew Tate say that reading books is a useless activity while they make up theories that have zero evidence. They tell young men how much better women have it, even though each of their arguments are easily disproven with facts and evidence. This is dangerous because when you're telling a massive audience of young men what they quote unquote deserve and what they are owed, while also telling them that another other group is holding them down, it leads to terrible outcomes. These men end up doing exactly the opposite of what people like Andrew Tate supposedly advocate for, which is personal responsibility and not blaming the world for all of your problems. Now they attacked me with their media machine. We're gonna break down some of Andrew Tate's conspiracy theories from this episode and the misinformation from this podcast about his ban. And why, why are we starting there? Well, because in order to realize just how much bad information and terrible logic this guy Andrew Tate spreads, you can start catching all of the other conspiracy theories that he weaves in. But before we get started, if you are new here, welcome to The Rewired Soul. My name's Chris, make sure you subscribe. I love making videos talking about a variety of different topics. One of the things that I am passionate about is stopping the spread of misinformation and conspiracy theories and trying to understand why people believe them, how to fact check these things and all of that. All right, so make sure that you're subscribed. And for all of you who are subscribed, make sure you're following me on social media. Well, if you're not subscribed, make sure you follow me on social media too. It's at The Rewired Soul. But as I've mentioned, I'm experimenting with some things with the channel. So you might not get a notification or see this video in your subscription feed. So make sure you're following me at The Rewired Soul so you don't miss anything, all right? And also real quick, as I mentioned, this is a five hour podcast episode. I have a lot more that I can pull from, so do me a favor. If you end up enjoying this episode, make sure you leave a comment or leave a like just so I know if you want me to do a deeper dive and discuss some other aspects of this, like you know everything going on with Andrew Tate and Logan Paul, uh, some topics around free speech and should he be banned, because there's actually a lot of different topics to dive into. So let me know by leaving a comment or liking the video just so I can make some more content for you guys. All right, so after Andrew Tate starts talking about and kind of poisoning the well that the government and the social media platforms are out to get him, they bring up this guy, Alex Berenson, who was talking about COVID and how it spreads and how the vaccines don't stop transmission on Twitter. Yeah. Did you follow the story? I don't, I don't know the exact story, no. So he was on Joe Rogan. If yeah. you've not seen it, I highly recommend you watch this. So he is saying things about Twitter. Matter of fact, the tweet that got him in trouble, got him his fifth strike, was the following tweet. We can put, put this up there because I'm just reading yeah. what he said. This is a tweet he put out that he said, it doesn't stop infection or transmission. Don't think of it as a vaccine. Think of it as, at best, a therapeutic with a limited window of uh, efficacy and terrible side effects profile that must be dosed in advance of illness and we want to mandate it. Insanity, that's his tweet. 
So he gets banned. Makes a lot of sense to me. In December of last year, which was six months after when Biden said anybody who allows debate of vaccine should be banned or shouldn't be allowed, meaning there shouldn't be any of that. So six months after that, he gets banned. In April, a judge in California, California is, believe it or not, a very big freedom of speech place because they allow protesting. A judge that was appointed by Bill Clinton comes in and says, I'm allowing this to go through because typically Section 230 yeah. that is in place in 1998 was to protect social media sites and many of these online sites that if you offend your ex-wife or if you offend your brother, it has nothing to do with Facebook. So they kind of protected themselves. But Alex was able to go all the way because of this court uh, judge that was appointed by Clinton, not, judge, not Obama or Trump. So right here, Patrick Bet David starts talking about how they took this to court and how this was six months after Joe Biden said something about banning people from social media who are spreading COVID misinformation, all right? Then you notice that Patrick starts connecting these dots about a Clinton appointed judge and how Alex was then put back on the platform and now Alex talks about the government and all these other things. Which was six months after when Biden said, anybody who allows debate of vaccine should be banned or shouldn't be allowed, meaning there shouldn't be any of that. Then from here, he uses that to transition into Andrew Tate's ban, all right? This is what's known as connecting the dots and conspiracy theorists absolutely love doing this. They will take completely different things with one connecting point and say, see, it's the exact same thing. And that is a big red flag that you're dealing with a conspiracy theorist. But we need to discuss what they're actually talking about. What happened to this guy, Alex Berenson? Well, here is a little clip from a New York Times article that kind of summarizes it. Just before boarding Marine One for a weekend in Camp David in Maryland, Mr. Biden was asked what his message was to social media platforms when it comes to COVID-19 disinformation. Quote, they're killing people, he said. Look, the only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated and that, and they're killing people. So there's a lot to take away from this, all right? So we have found out that Getting the vaccine does not stop the spread of transmission, okay? Especially with new variants coming out and everything like that. But everybody should be vaccinated because it greatly reduces the chances of severe illness or even death, okay? And I hope you all realize too, since we don't have a nationalized healthcare system because this country is ruled by capitalism, with all of the unvaccinated people who are constantly filling up these hospitals because they're sick with COVID, that is jacking up healthcare costs and it's also putting a lot of stress on these hospitals and we're seeing nurses strike and everything like that because they've been overloaded for the past two years by people who are unvaccinated. So was what Biden said technically correct? Not entirely, but there are a lot of different ways to look at this. But the issue that comes from what Patrick was saying about this is that the, we have to understand that there is a major difference. There is a major difference between something like what Alex Berenson was saying about how the vaccine does not stop transmission. There's a difference between that and what conspiracy theorists like Russell Brand are putting up on YouTube every single day, okay? And that's one of the issues is when you're connecting dots like this, you're taking completely different scenarios, you're not providing any nuance, and you're saying, look, these are the same things when they're not. Within the conspiracy and misinformation world, there are many different people, many different layers, many different stories, many different narratives, and all of that. Now. Like I said, I, I would love to do a conversation around free speech and misinformation because it is a, a tricky topic, especially, especially when it comes to COVID-19. There's a lot of people who have already made videos about this or they've discussed this on podcasts, but the information is regularly changing. And that is why I always say you should follow the experts and see what the consensus is around these topics. But anyways, like I said, Patrick Bet David uses the Alex Berenson story to then switch over to Andrew Tate and his social media bans, even though they are two completely different things. And this is when Andrew Tate starts spewing out like a fire hose discussing what happened to him and how these social media companies operate. I believe there's huge pressure behind the dam in regards to the fact that everybody understands that these places are tyrannical and that they control ideas and that they force narratives. And I use my wording as the matrix. I call them the matrix. And people say to me, why do you call them the matrix? And I say, because they project 
a false version of reality in real time that people subscribe to. If there wasn't an absolute blacklist on all opposing views during COVID-19, that would never have gone on for as long as it did. It went on for as long as it did, and they managed to purport a false version of reality for so long because you couldn't discuss the opposing side. Hi, editing Chris here again. I can't believe I forgot to mention this. But real quick, something else that you'll hear a lot, especially especially from COVID vaccine conspiracy theorists, is how many views and how many opinions were suppressed. Now, were there bans? Yes, absolutely. But if you look, you can go back, you can search through the history. People like Russell Brand and some of these quack doctors out there and people like Brett Weinstein, none of them were ever banned. They didn't get a strike. Nothing happened to suppress their opinions. So if you were to only listen to people like Andrew Tate, you would think that they were just out there with a button and just boom, boom, blocked, blocked all over the place. And this is not what happened, okay? Look into it, go back, search the history. There are people, especially, especially Russell Brand, who I recently made a video about, they said this from the start to the finish of the entire COVID pandemic when it was at its worst. So no, not everybody was being suppressed the way these conspiracy theorists say they are. And the reason they say this is because they want to give the idea that they're trying to get out the truth, but people are against them. And in this next segment, I talk a little bit about that kind of story that they tell. So first off, yes, social media platforms have major issues, a ton of issues. Their algorithms are terrible. They put you into bubbles and all sorts of things. But what you need to understand about Andrew Tate and all the people who are free speech warriors is that what they're saying is easily falsifiable, all right? Take one second, just stop and ask yourself, how am I hearing this information that is coming out of Andrew Tate's mouth right now? you are hearing it on a social media platform. Just take a step back and realize that this is so easily falsifiable. They are openly saying the exact things on social media that they say is being censored. And for some reason, the people who fall for the conspiracy theories of Andrew Tate, they don't think about that for just one second. If you're hearing someone say something on social media that they say is, cens is going to be censored, there is an issue and they're clearly wrong. And by the way, just jumping back in here while I'm editing to clarify, yes, Andrew Tate was banned. You can call that censorship but I'm specifically pointing out that they're having conversations around COVID-19 information, and they're saying you get banned for what they're talking about. There are many, many other people who do this, including people like Russell Brand, Brett Weinstein, and so many others who are within that space. I recently finished one of my favorite books on the psychology of conspiracy theorists called Suspicious Minds. And one of the things they talk about is how conspiracy theorists, they really love stories, all right? They fall for narratives, okay? And that completely makes sense. And one of the things the book talks about is the whole David and Goliath story. People love it. It's the little guy versus the big guy. And as you have seen throughout all of these Andrew Tate clips, he's the little guy, the social media platforms are the big guy, all right? This is how a lot of conspiracy theorists get their massive followings because they believe that they are supporting David against the big Goliath, which is the social media platforms or it is the government. But you need to understand that these individuals like Andrew Tate, they are also Goliaths. They have massive followings and are making millions of dollars off of all the people who are falling for this narrative that they're just being suppressed and they're just trying to spread the truth and they're just trying to help people. The reality is, is that 90% of what they're saying is purely out of self-interest and how much money goes into their bank accounts. Already I've moved to Rumble. I only had 738,000 subscribers on my YouTube after five years of work. Post ban, I moved to Rumble, which is a YouTube competitor. Stock price has gone up 36%, and I'm at five, I'm at half a million subscribers in two weeks. So if you're interested in debunking conspiracy theories and spotting misinformation, this is the perfect clip because what Andrew Tate just said is extremely misleading. And it is about as close to the line of misinformation as you could possibly get, okay? So Andrew Tate says that Rumble stock is massively up and Google stock is down, okay? So here's a brief breakdown. I am not a finance expert, but 
I am an investor and I know quite a bit about stocks and how all this stuff works. So for those who don't know, what Andrew Tate just said just sounds like something you would just brush off. You'd be like, oh, okay, Rumble stocks up. What's the matter? All right, so I'm gonna try to break this down real quick. So if a company is private, you cannot buy stock in that company. You can only be a private investor, okay? This is when like venture capitalists come in or just people with a lot of money or angel investors, all sorts of stuff. That is private companies. In order for a stock price to be up in the way that Andrew Tate is saying, the company has to be public. So we need to ask, is Rumble a publicly traded company? You can go right now, type into Google, Rumble stock, okay? You'll find a stock that says Rumble on, that is not the Rumble that Andrew Tate is talking about. When I did this, when I went to fact check him, I got a little curious. I'm like, okay, well, what the heck is he talking about? So check out this article from Seeking Alpha. It is an investing website. So it says, in December, 2021, Rumble announced a definitive business combination agreement with CF Acquisition Corp VI. Shareholders must approve the deal on a vote scheduled to close on September 15th. And a little bit more information on this, a big key to where the stock trades following the approval of the SPAC deal are the actual financials. Rumble is still in the startup phase and the public market isn't very forgiving of money losing stocks right now. Then if you actually go to Rumble's Twitter account, you can see right there in the bio, the next generation of video and cloud news Rumble to combine with NASDAQ listed CFVI. So what does this all mean? In order for Rumble to have a publicly traded stock, which they do not have right now, they need to get bought out by CFVI, which the private investors are voting on on September 15th, which at the time of recording this is tomorrow. So if this goes down, then Rumble will kind of be a publicly traded company. So let's break that down real quick. This deal has not closed yet. CFVI, the company that is possibly buying out Rumble is a publicly traded company. So yes, CFVI stock went up and it went up a lot. It's over 30% in the last month, which is huge, but since CFVI does not own Rumble yet, what you are seeing is that people are speculatively investing in the company that plans on buying out Rumble. So it is extremely misleading to say that quote, Rumble stock is massively up. Again, like I said, what you have to do, if you wanna catch conspiracy theorists and people who spread misinformation, you have to catch all of the little things, all of the little tiny things you gotta fact check. It takes two seconds. I always say it takes two seconds to look into these things. The whole rumble thing going down took me maybe five to 10 minutes. We can't just sit back and passively listen to this. But the problem is, is that a lot of people in Andrew Tate's following, a lot of people who follow the Manosphere bros are just listening to this stuff and taking it in. But I think the absolute craziest part about this is that these guys, Andrew Tate and Patrick, the host, they're actively talking about how they're unfairly censored by social media platforms because they're just spreading the truth. They're not spreading misinformation. But as you can see, you fact check them for one second and you're like, wait, what you just said is false. So again, they advocate for personal responsibility and not blaming the whole world for your problems, but they are regularly looking at these things through this lens as a freaking victim and it is mind boggling. So anyways, this was just the first like 15 to 20 minutes of that podcast episode that was like five hours. So if you like this, if you're interested in me diving deeper into this, like I wouldn't make like 10 videos on this. I would probably just do one big one, pull some of the important parts, do a video essay on it. So if you're interested in that, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up anyways. Uh, and if you're new, make sure you're subscribed. Everybody who is subscribed, if you're watching this, make sure you're following me on social media at The Rewired Soul so you don't miss any upcoming videos as I toy around with the settings of the uploads and all that kind of stuff, all right? But anyways, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you next time.